Now recall we have a spring here. The spring is called as linear spring, and this is right now is a free length. To this spring, if you have any force, it is going to elongate due to application of the force from this point to this point. We normally call it as delta, and this one is a spring force. So we always express spring force as k times multiplied by delta, where k is called as stiffness. Or in general, we will call k. Now don't get confused with this k. And the previous k, yeah. so this k is called as stiffness, and usually defined as force divided by deflection. Now, similar to this, I have one equation here, torque. Now, force is analogous to torque, and this is linear displacement. Linear displacement is analogous to theta. So, we'll replace force in a rotational system by torque. Linear deformation is replaced by theta. It means that F by delta is same as T by theta. That time, it is called as kT. Called as torsional stiffness and is defined as T divided by theta. Now T divided by theta, so you have to collect this two term and solve for T by theta. Then you will get probably this one is G multiplied by J divided by L. So G multiplied by J divided by L will be your torsional stiffness, Newton meter per radian. So meaning of this term is that suppose you apply a torque like this on a shaft. Now when you have to understand the sign of this one, you come to this side. Try to visualize this. Come to this side. Visualize this star. Is this star is clockwise? And if it is a clockwise, on other side you have to use anti-clockwise to make your moment equal to zero. So this means that a torque is uniform from this point to this point. So whenever you are given this figure, you can replace this figure as a spring, and you can show this one is a torque, and you can show this one is a torque. And below this you have to write down k t equals to g multiplied by j divided by l. So this is another way to solve the same problem by using the spring tip analogy. Now, question का जो chapter है वो आपका बिल्कुल stress stress जैसा chapter होता है। जैसे हमारे पास कोई element है और हम इसको force लगा देंगे, तो जो भी हम force लगा देंगे इसके अंदर deformation होगा। जो deformation होगा हमारे पास में वो F D L हो जाएगा। Is whenever we apply the force, it has a deformation, so we have F L by A. Now recall here, we have again the force divided by delta. Now this time delta is dl, and we have f. So what is k? This time only k because it's a linear spring. It's an elastic material. So this is k equals to f divided by dl. K k is defined as force divided by deformation is dl. So we will try to rearrange this. Is it a by l? So you can replace this arrangement as good as this. And this time k equals to this one is g. This one is g. So this will be e. A is a geometry property. J geometry property. L. So any element you can replace with the help of spring. Okay, read data first. We have a hollow aluminium shaft with an outside diameter of 80. So we have do equal to 80 mm, and wall thickness is 5 mm. So we have t equals to 5 mm. Now naturally, d will be equal to what? Do minus 2t is 80 minus 10 is 70 mm. Again, allowable shear stress is given as this tau. Is it tau max? So we are always using tau max. This one is 75 megapascal. What you need to find out is torque. Torque is given by hollow shaft is pi by 16 into d o q into tau into 1 minus k to the power 4. And what is k? K is defined as d i divided by d o. Your answer will come very close to 3120117 newton mm will be 312. Zero newton meter, and to be more precise, is 3.12 kilo newton meter. A solid shaft. So it's a solid shaft of diameter equal to 20. So required only capital D is 20 mm. Bronze shaft transmit 11 kilowatts. So we have a power transmission of 11 kilowatts, 11,000 watts. The frequency of F equal to 25 hertz is cycle per second to the propeller of a small sailboat. You want to calculate maximum shear stress, tau max, and as far as tau max is considered, it's same as tau for you. So very first thing is that you have to calculate torque. Just now we have developed the formula that two pi f multiplied by t is power. So you substitute this and calculate torque. First. Torque come out to be 70.0. And second one, your torque is equal to pi by 16 into d cube multiplied by tau. So put for this a 70. 0.028. Remember to substitute in mm. 
10 to the power 3 pi by 16 d cube d cube is 20 cube multiplied by tau and confirm this value of tau is 44.6 is mega pascal we have a hollow shaft with an od equal to 100 so we have do equal to 100 mm wall thickness is 10 so we can calculate di as do minus twice d is 100 minus 2 times is 80 mm and is subjected to pure torque means only torque is acting is 5500 newton meter in first case you have to find out maximum shear stress in hollow shaft so in first part we have to calculate k first which is equals to di divided by do 80 by 100 is pointed and we have torque formula is pi by 16 doq into tau into 1 minus k to the power 4 substitute all this value and confirm tau is equals to 47.4 part 2 he says that determine the minimum diameter of solids for which the maximum shear stress is same as in the part 1 so this time we have solid shaft and permitted value of tau is same as the part 1 that is 47.4 so we have the same formula again t equals to pi by 16 d cube multiplied by tau so t is equals to 5500 always make mm pi by 16 d cube multiplied by tau that is 47.4 83.89 so we make it 83.9 extend this problem for discussion because we already done the calculation for this we will calculate the weight for solid shaft and for hollow shaft assuming rho is the density and l is length common to both shaft so what is the weight for hollow shaft so weight is defined as rho multiplied by g multiplied by pi by 4 do minus di square multiplied by length l and for this case we have w is equal to rho multiplied by g multiplied by pi by 4 multiplied by d square multiplied by l so just try to find out this value in terms of rho g and take all dimensions in meter so this one is rho multiplied by g multiplied by pi by 4 do is 0.1 square di is 0.8 square multiplied by l this one is rho into g into pi by 4 to 0.83 so this one is weight of hollow part so just calculate in terms of pi by 4 into rho multiplied by g multiplied by l because this part is common for both what is the value of 0.1 square minus 0.8 this one is 0.08 so what are you getting 3 point minus 3 and what is this number 10 to the power minus 3 so what do you observe about the constant number is the constant number here small and is the constant number is here large so for the same power transmission is the weight of the hollow portion is low is almost 50 percent if the weight is low naturally it is a more economical to use the hollow shaft and therefore the hollow shaft is most preferred hollow shaft are always preferred as compared to the solid shaft due to less weight in fact can we call say less weight means more economical but the idea is true if the dimensions of the shaft are very large eh? 